Hello, everybody. First and foremost, I just want to say thank you so, so, so much for coming out tonight. I'm Preston Hawes. I'm uh, the director of the New England Youth Ensemble. Uh, the strings of which you see in front of you will bring the winds and brass on a little bit later. Um, this is our very first time performing as a full group uh, in a public space in over 18 months. And uh, it has been a real journey to get to this, this place right now. Um, Things still feel a little bit strange sometimes. You know, we, we're, we're all seeing each other, trying to rec recognize each other through masks. When you order your, your drink at Starbucks and you want to say thank you, you have to smile with your eyes real hard. It's, <laughs> it's, if you can imagine that everyday life transposed into communicating while we play, it's really been a learning experience for us and for myself too as, as a director. Um, so, uh, that being said, I just am overjoyed that we can actually be here in person in this beautiful space. I want to say thank you so much to, uh, to uh, Spencerville Church and to their staff, to Michael Patterson for um, having us here this, this evening. This is really a special treat for us. So we'll begin the program appropriately, I think, with Bach, with one of the most joyous movements that he wrote while he was not working for the church. He worked for the church pretty much his entire life, except for a period where he um, was working for a court, uh, a nobleman's court, and he was able to write some, uh, some really, really great non-liturgical uh, music. And this is uh, one of, I think, probably one of the most uh, exciting movements that, that he wrote from that time period. It features uh, altogether uh, a ripieno, which is a, a full uh, string section, um, and soloists within those string sections. So I want you to listen for the different conversations, the different voices that just pop out from the fabric of the rest of uh, the strings as, as they're playing. I hope you enjoy this, and uh, we'll chat a little bit more in a minute.
I think Bach is probably my favorite composer. He just had a brilliance about his way. There was an ease about his writing, but also just this innate brilliance. Um, there was another composer, a little bit after Bach, by the name of Vivaldi. He, um, he, was, he was a very interesting guy. Apparently he had really bright red hair and a temper to match, and he was going to go into the ministry, but uh, it didn't quite work out for him. He didn't feel that his temperament matched very well, and so instead he became a music teacher. Um, it probably explains uh, why he was successful. <laughs> so he, uh, he ended up actually uh, teaching at a, uh, an orphanage and in Venice. And this orphanage was just for girls. Um, he, he taught there for a long time, but wrote an awful lot of music. I don't know exactly where he was at the point that he wrote this, this piece that we're going to hear. Um, but the, uh, the great thing is, is that the, the, um, the arrangement, because uh, they kind of overlapped a little bit, um, is by Bach. So we get to hear a little bit of Vivaldi and Bach. Um, I'd also like to introduce to you a wonderful soloist, a trumpet soloist. His name is Abner. He is one of our uh, very talented students at WAU. Um, he uh, approached me a bit ago saying, hey, I'd really like to play this Vivaldi concerto with the orchestra. And, you know, to be honest, trying to find a good balance between um, <clears throat> learning new music and also featuring soloists is, is a challenge sometimes. And I thought, well, you know, we're, we're a little bit close to the concert date. Maybe we should uh, wait a little while. But uh, we read it and uh, um, put it together actually in the last two weeks. So um, I'd like to introduce to you uh, our soloist for the evening, Abner. Is he here? Oh, we might need to, he's probably warming up. So um, in, that, in that moment, we'll just take a second to tune and then invite him on. Oh, here he is.
we're just going to make a uh, very quick uh, stage change, and uh, then I'll introduce to you uh, Dr. Brian Liu, co-director of the New England Youth Ensemble. He uh, uh, and I co-teach at WAU and uh, really enjoy working together. So I'm now going to turn the uh, microphone over to him. Thank you so much, Preston. I, too, also really enjoy teaching with you. Wasn't that trumpet concerto really fantastic? <laughs> so, so I don't know, I don't remember if Dr. Hawes mentioned this, but that was actually written for the violin. It was written for the violin and transcribed for trumpet. So every time I see Abner, I'm like, you know, Abner, you should have played the violin. It would have been so much easier. <laughs> Our next piece is the St. Paul Suite written by Gustav Holst. One of my first memories playing in a symphony orchestra a long time ago was playing Gustav Holst's The Planets, a big orchestral work, one of the great big orchestral works. I, I remember that distinctly. And so when this year came around, and we were thinking of repertoire, we were like, well, maybe let's do another Gustav Holst piece. So we decided to pick St. Paul's Suite. <laughs> Gustav Holst was an English composer. Um, he lived, he taught at a girls' school. He taught at a girls' school called St. Paul's, just outside of London. And so he wrote this piece for his students there. Hope you enjoy it.
that's always a really fun piece to be able to sit in the very back and play because the stress isn't on me. <laughs> it's, uh, Holtz, Holtz was a wonderful writer, um, but I'm not certain he was a violinist. It's not all that, uh, all that easy. So uh, well done, strings, really well done. Um, while the uh, rest of the orchestra comes on, I just want to take a minute to talk a little bit about the youth ensemble, tell you a little bit um, why we have a youth ensemble established as the resident orchestra of a university. It's a bit of a misnomer because we don't, it's not just youth, it's not just college students, it's a big conglomeration of, um, of effort, and I want to explain that. So when I first started with the youth ensemble, I was invited by Dr. Rittenhouse, the founder and director, to come on tour with her. I had no idea who she was. She called me in the middle of the afternoon, and this elderly lady um, sounding person on the other side of the phone said, my name's Dr. Rittenhouse, I know your friend so-and-so, they say you play very well, and would you like to come to uh, Norway, Sweden, Russia, Finland, and Iceland this summer? And I said, yes. Um, I didn't think about it even for a second. I just said, yes. And uh, that, was, that was basically the, the yes that got me uh, started with this group. Um, now, I was 16, um, or 15, I can't remember. Um, but it was over half my life ago. And, uh, it was absolutely a life-changing moment um, and, and experience for me. Much of that having to do with the fact that there is a spirit of mentorship in the youth ensemble. So we have, um, we have a long tradition of uh, featuring soloists, um, <clears throat> as well as in the works of the ensemble. You don't necessarily see this, but you'll have everyone from high school students to college teachers to alumni to current students, freshmen, sophomores, uh, juniors, and uh, seniors. I said that in the wrong order. No, I didn't. Good, I got it right. Um, so you have everybody in there. And what we try and do is to make sure that those students who are uh, just coming in have someone who they can kind of link up with. Um, you know, we're a small department, so we don't always have the entire section full. Our rehearsals are sometimes just bare bones. We have um, sectionals where we work through this stuff. And then when we all get together, we make sure that everybody has somebody to rely on. Somebody perhaps with a little more experience sitting next to somebody with a little less experience. And that was basically what got me started as well. I was uh, sitting in the back of the violins next to a seasoned player who had been there for years and years. And um, I was able to kind of work my way up. There were so many concerts I was sight reading on. It was so uh, necessary to have somebody next to me who knew what, what they were playing. I try not to do that too often. I don't think yet you've had to sight read a concert. Um, but uh, what, what that taught me was that there's this enormous value in mentorship, not just for the person being mentored, but for the person who's doing the mentoring. <clears throat> now, we also have a parent organization. It's actually the organization that um, uh, really kind of undergirds and, and funds the ensemble in many ways. Uh, it's called the New England Symphonic Ensemble. And that is a professional group in uh, New York City that um, has a series of concerts at Carnegie Hall, anywhere between 12 and 14 concerts a year. And so what we try and do is audition young students into the Carnegie Scholars Program of the Youth Ensemble. That gives them an additional mentorship opportunity to be mentored by a professional musician. Some of these musicians in the, in the symphonic ensemble are playing in the Met, are playing in Broadway shows. We even have some that are in the New York Phil. And they come and play these concerts with us and the Carnegie Scholars get to play next to them. The, uh, the pandemic was absolutely devastating to the symphonic ensemble. And um, I, I, being that I do all the paperwork and, and all, basically all, all the running of it, it's a, a one pony show, um, the, the, uh, I, I can tell you it was absolutely devastating for the ensemble. Um, I would ask that you keep your thoughts and prayers for the ensemble that we have a concert season starting in February so that we can start that mentorship program again. Um, but one thing that you can do right now is uh, look to the 
university that we have a wonderful relationship with, Washington Adventist University. We've worked under their auspices for years, since the mid-90s, and they've been incredibly supportive of the ensemble. They have, in fact, set up a fund specifically for the ensemble and for the music department. So if you have a program, and I'm sorry if you didn't get one, um, please feel free to share. There is a QR code on the back of your program all what you have to do is turn the camera on your smartphone on, and it will recognize that QR code, give you a link, and you can donate to support the music department, specifically the youth ensemble um, tonight. I would ask you to consider that. We're not gonna take a collection tonight. Uh, we just want you to sit back and relax, but please do consider that. Point your phone at it, give it to your neighbor if they don't have one, point your phone at it, and uh, pull that link up on your, your browser and consider su supporting. You know, normally in, in situations like this where, uh, you know, universities have an orchestra um, that is uh, doing concerts in the community, very often, in fact, more often than not, there are ticket sales. But we understand at WAU, we are the gateway to service, and we want our students and faculty and all of our guests and all of our alumni to have that same sense of service and that same dedication to the community around us. So uh, we're not asking for uh, ticket sales, we're not asking for uh, even a collection tonight, but just that you consider supporting uh, the ensemble, supporting the music department, and think about the fact that you know, if you bought a ticket, it'd be anywhere between $10, $25. So um, if you can do that, if you can add a zero to any of those numbers or two zeros, <laughs> even better. So we thank you very much for, uh, for coming out tonight. We have two more pieces featuring the full ensemble. Um, the band has been very busy. These are our band players now that have joined us uh, in the Winds and Brass. They've been very busy. They just played their own concert last week, so that's why they got a bit of a, a break today. So uh, we'll tune up the orchestra and bring the last two pieces. The, um, let's tune first, and then I'll tell you about them. So the uh, next piece you're going to hear is by Beethoven. It's, uh, um, it's got an interesting title, and you might wonder what it's all about. Um, I think that that's, uh, that will probably put you in a very interesting Wikipedia hole um, if, you, if you start looking up all of the themes that Beethoven used to write about. So I'm going to pinpoint uh, and focus in on, on a, a, a predominant theme that appears in his music, and that's overcoming. Very often you hear in Beethoven's music um, a sense of, of foreboding or, um, you know, a, a sense of, of conflict. And that's, that's really, uh, I think, an indication of what he was experiencing in life. He spent a long time knowing he was going deaf. And this was at the peak of his career. So he didn't just instantly go, he didn't have an accident or anything like that, but he knew it was a slow, slow train crash of, uh, uh, of, of his hearing that he just couldn't do anything about. He went to so many doctors, nothing worked. And they basically told him, you're going to go completely deaf. And he did. He went stone cold deaf. And he continued writing music because he could hear it in his mind. It's very interesting when you look particularly at his string quartets. After the point that he went deaf, his music blossomed in creativity. He was no longer held down or held back by the conventions, the norms that everybody else was doing. Yes, he, he knew what they were doing. He could look at the score and, and, and read it and hear it in his, in his uh, mind's ear, but he never existed in that space after he went deaf. Uh, deaf. So, 
um, I think that it's, it's really interesting to listen to his music and to um, find out where he was in that journey when he was writing. Um, this, this piece is no different, it really isn't. Um, you're confronted right from the beginning with, uh, with, with very strong chords and then a plaintive melody that then uh, just uh, evolves into a very busy uh, and, and focused sort of sound. Um, and you can hear him continually working through something in this busyness until he comes out victorious in the end. And, you know, frankly, I think that um, not, not just for us musicians, um, but for everybody, this has been such a challenging uh, couple years. Uh, you know, we, I remember I thought, okay, yeah, four, four weeks, five weeks, we'll be back to normal. My goodness, where, was I wrong? Um, this has been one of the most challenging times um, of my own profession, professional uh, career. And I know for the students, it has been incredibly difficult. You know, we had some students who were um, overseas. We had some who were in, in uh, South America. We had some who were in Canada. Um, you know, uh, and teachers who were in Canada, teachers who were, who were elsewhere as well. We still have a couple students who are trying to make their way here. Um, so, you know, we're still in the thick of it. We're still in this. We're still working to, uh, together. And quite honestly, I think that the effort um, of these students is nothing less than heroic. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to give them a moment of uh, recognition. So uh, before we play, I, I really do appreciate all of your work. Uh, it's, it's, it's been, um, I think, no, no less than uh, um, miserable at times and you've done such a good job, so please give them a hand. <laughs> so, here we are. Um, we'll be bringing you uh, this wonderful moment by Beethoven, and then I will let uh, Dr. Liu introduce the last piece.
So I hope you've enjoyed this evening's concert. Our, our final number uh, this evening is by the composer Felix Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn was born into a Jewish family, but his father had both he and his sister Fanny baptized into the Lutheran church. They became devout Lutherans, and he wrote this fifth symphony in honor of Martin Luther. In fact, he took one of his chorales Ein Festberg ist unser Gott. A mighty God is our fortress. I'm sorry, I knew I'd mix it up. What was it? A mighty fortress is our God. Did I still get it? I knew I'd mix it up. Just knew it. A mighty fortress is our God. And he built this symphony around that tune. I think a lot of us are familiar with that tune. So I hope you enjoy this.
again, thank you all ever so much for coming out tonight. We wish you a wonderful weekend. Enjoy this fall weather. Um, and uh, please keep in mind that we will be having a Christmas concert December 3rd at Sligo Church at 7... 30 p.m., 7.30 p.m. Okay, they feed me information as I go. It's a wonder I can actually get through one piece. So thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening.